So, you want to learn how to mask and do fancy transitions like this. Well, I got you. Came to the right place. Let's get started. You want to find some footage that you can transition with. I prefer clips that have any eyes, something moving across or covering the entire screen, or any practical situations with camera movement, like moving through a door. Now that we have some footage, let's create a composition. 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second is what I'm running with. When it comes to frame rate and masking, I try to stay close to the source footage frame rate, either 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. I rarely mask anything close to 60 frames per second, but that's just me. Time to pick which tool you're going to use. There are two ways that I go about rotoscoping. If there are more than that, I've been living under a rock, honestly. You have the pen tool, which usually is the most time consuming. Then you have the roto brush, which is quicker, but it takes a while to get accurate when it comes to anime. When using the pen tool, I mask on adjustment layers. I do this so I can see the main footage while I mask, or if I want to add anything to the main footage later on. This is how it usually goes. I add an adjustment layer on top of the footage that I will mask. I create an adjustment layer using Control alt y Command-Alt-Y on Mac. I split the layers on each frame, usually where it changes the most. If I can use one mask for multiple frames, I won't split it. I use Control in the brackets to bring the adjustment layer above the footage. This is important, make sure y'all do that. Once I have everything split up, I crack my knuckles and get to masking. When finished with one frame, I select the footage and change the track mat to alpha mat. This will mask only the areas that you selected. If you're confused at this step, I would try my best to explain mats. Welcome to my lovely talk on track mats. A track mat, I keep saying track mat. A track mat is basically using the alpha channel or luminous values of one layer to mask out the layer beneath it. In this case, I'm using the alpha values of the adjustment layer to mask out the footage. Now you might say, the adjustment layer is invisible. Slow down, buckaroo. Check it out. It's magic. The adjustment layer is a white solid if you uncheck the icon, meaning I can use it as a mat, an alpha mat or a luma mat. I could do another video on mats like alpha mats and luma mats and inverted mats and all types of mats and uh, mattresses. I can do that too, but let's get on with the video. Basically, I repeat this process until the masking is complete, then I render it out with an alpha jammer. Roto brush. This is how my roto brush process goes. First. I grab my footage, I grab it. Then I set the start and the end point for my rotoscoping with the alt brackets. Alt left bracket for the start, alt right bracket for the end. Then I pre-compose the footage with control shift C or command shift C on Mac. Then I move all the attributes to a new composition. You can click adjust composition duration to the time span of selected layers. Basically what happens is it makes a new composition and it doesn't make it like a huge duration it doesn't make it like 10 minutes it only makes the duration of the footage that you pre-composed boom now this is where it gets spicy go up to the toolbar and click the rotor brush tool Sizzle. or you can use all w but it's not as hot now double click your footage to go into the layer view press ctrl j to bring that bad boy in full resolution you should see a green circle if you hover over the footage if it looks like a call of duty crosshair let's fix it hold ctrl or command Hold left click and drag that mouse up or down to change the size. The rest is straightforward, but I'll explain it anyway. Hold left click and highlight the parts you want with a green brush. If you don't want a certain part, then hold alt and use the red. To move forward a frame, press page down. To move back, use page up. Rotor brush will try its best to figure out the next frame. Now before you start speed racing to the end of the timeline, let me help you out. You can use some tools at the bottom of the layer window to help you. You have the toggle alpha channel, we talked about this earlier. Then you have alpha boundary, which we definitely need. Then we have the alpha overlay, which you can change the color and transparency of the solid to see how your roto looks against solid colors other than black and white. Now it's time for your first mission. I want you to roto these frames. Keep going and do, and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. Done. Now you gotta freeze. Freeze. Now you can mess around with the settings. Feather, soften those edges up. Contrast, honestly, it just changes how hard or soft the edges are. Shift edge, it shifts the edges in or out. Reduce chatter, it reduces any jitter or edges that aren't smooth. It usually doesn't work too well in these cases, for me, but you can try it out. Use motion blur, that is personal preference. If it looks good, you should. If it looks bad, well, <laughs> turn it off. Now you're done. 
Finished. Quick tip, render out your finished rotoscope in that composition. Now for the finale. Let's talk about transitions. I'm going to make a simple transition with rotos that I've already done. One is from my hero and the other is from Hunter x Hunter. First one we have Midoriya with this one he is free falling from the sky. Um, what we can do is keyframe the position so he's coming off of the screen and moving onto the screen. When he gets close to the camera we can scale him up close so he can cover up the screen for the next clip. Set a keyframe at the beginning. Set another keyframe a few frames later. Go to the first keyframe, move Midoriya up to the top of the screen, and boom, there you go. Now, let's mess with the scale. As he rises up a bit, we can scale him up as well. Easy. Now we have a little transition on our hands. Next, we have Gon. And this isn't necessarily a transition, but it can lead into one like the intro that I showed earlier. We can keyframe Gon's movement to come in from the side of the screen. I set a keyframe at the beginning, then move that keyframe forward a bit, and then set another keyframe, and then I moved going to the right, so it moves him off of the screen. Then highlight those keyframes, hit F9, or right click the keyframes, go to keyframe assistance, and click easy ease. This eases the keyframes, then go to the graph editor. Now, if you have taken math class before, you'll know this is gonna be a breeze. All we gotta do is bring the left keyframe back, and the right keyframe back as well to make an exponential looking curve. That means what will happen is Gon will come in from the side fast and then he'll slow down once he gets close to the middle. You know, cause he's holding that punch so it's like a momentum situation. If we had it where it was the opposite then he would speed up but it would be a hard stop and that wouldn't look good. Boom! Now slap on that motion blur and be on your way. I hope you learned something. Take it and combine it with your own creative ideas. If you make something nice that you learned from this tutorial, send it in Discord or tag me on Twitter. I don't post that much on there though, but I still get notifications, so I'll add your boy. Cool, I hope I explained that well. If I didn't, go ahead and comment and let me know. I'll try to answer the questions. If you guys want any extra help, I have a Discord channel. It's in the description. I'm trying to get back on the posting grind. I know y'all missed it, but I'm back and I'm better than ever. But all right, I hope you all are having a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this helped you out. If it did, leave a like, maybe subscribe, possibly, if you want to. Up to you. And I'll catch you guys on the flip like a pancake. This has been Mo. Y'all be awesome. God bless. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.